Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of A Mic on the Podium with me, Michael Seal. Today, I conduct a conversation with a German conductor, who's also a double competition winner. He won the Donatella Flick competition in 2008, and the Nestle and Salzburg Festival Young Conductors Award in 2010. Since 2014, he's held a position with the Orchestra y Coro Nacional de España in Madrid, becoming Chief Conductor and Artistic Advisor in 2019. It's a pleasure to welcome David Afkam. David, it's lovely to meet you and to see you and to speak with you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. I'm very well. I gather congratulations are in order and you've just had your second child. So I'm imagining, uh, well, first of all, thank you for finding an hour or so to speak with me. I'm imagining sleep is something you're craving at the moment. Yes. Uh, we, we uh, Well, it's very intense, but uh, so far <laughs> it's going everything well. But uh, yes, sleep is always a very nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, talking of beginnings of lives, let's go right back to the beginning of your life and find out when music first came into your world. Do you come from a musical family? Did it come out of nowhere? How did it first touch your life? Well, music has always been part of, of uh, our family or my family. Um, I'm the youngest of five children and uh, all of uh, my uh, my brother and three sisters, we, we all play an instrument or instruments and um, three of us became professional musicians the two others are medical doctors my oh, father wow. is a medical doctor so it's it's um and my mother uh, with five children she, she then she was more at home um but uh, both my parents um um love music love classical music um and have kind of uh, yes transmitted this 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 laugh to us. Um, so it was for me quite normal when I saw that, you know, um, going with my brother or with my sisters to the orchestra rehearsals as a small one, little one, it was quite normal that to ask, yeah, what kind of instrument I'd like to learn it as well. And, you know, uh, so it was a natural process uh, mm. in my family because music is surrounded us all the time. Mm. And I started when I was six years old, I started with piano and violin both instruments at the same time and actually played it really both instruments until 18, 19, mm. when I decided to become a young student um, uh, in Freiburg, which is my hometown, Freiburg and Breisgau in Germany. Um, then piano became more dominant, more, more important. And I just continued playing violin because just time-wise, it was not possible anymore with school um, to, 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 to do all the things in both instruments at the same high level with competitions, chamber music, orchestra playing and so on. So I decided violin just to, to, to continue playing in the orchestra, mm. and concert master and different orchestras, school orchestras, youth orchestras, which was very beautiful and um, focused more on piano. And, um, and then was the time also where I discovered the conducting. But also for conducting, of course, piano is, is, is very important for, the, you know, for the score reading and all that. Yes. Stuff. Well, I mean, I'm a terrible pianist, so I would agree with you, and I wished I'd learned the piano better. But I think the other thing that other conductors would be jealous of is your knowledge of string playing by being a violinist. I think, you know, those who don't play the strings... Uh, it's there's possibly more to learn for a non-string player when they come to conduct than the other way around. Don't you agree? It's I think it's very important to to have at least one, if not a better, more than just one instrument which is connected, really, or which comes from the orchestra, where you mm. can connect immediately. I think we all agree on that. That we just have another understanding and not just understanding but also an emotional um connection to 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 what it means to have the sound in your hands yes um, yeah. I, I think the resistance of sound for instance a part of the technical aspects that you can discuss or or help with at certain points or just trying to realize what you have in your hand and express it better in your words because you know the instruments i think a part of that, it's more important that you just connect with that kind of soul that you have in your hands. So yes. it's, it's um, I'm, 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 I was very fortunate to, to, to get the other perspective as well. You know? Were you inspired to take up conducting by anybody that you'd seen or had been conducted by when you were playing the violin? 
Um, I mean, for me, that wasn't the case. I just sort of took it up when I was at conservatory level. Um, but I then looked back and thought, well, I wondered why I liked certain conductors made my youth orchestra than other conductors. How were, what were those early experiences of being conducted like? Well, I, I didn't have um, a kind of a specific moment where, uh, where I was sitting in the orchestra and I felt, yeah, that's the conductor. That's, you know, that's the yeah. example I want to follow. No, it was not that the case. It was more... Um, uh, one element come, came to the other, yeah. I would say. Um, first of all, the, the family background, the, the, the love to music, surround, being surrounded by music, doing a lot of chamber music, piano and violin, um, getting the experience sitting in an orchestra uh, <laughs> with all that, you know, the, the, the youth um, orchestras, the, the, the weekends, the rehearsal, the intense rehearsal pr pr processes and days and the concerts and and the tours that we we did we we went to with our school orchestra we did an exchange with harrisburg pennsylvania in the united states of america just wow. you know and, and and those two three times and just to experience the other culture also culture i mean it's a western culture but another country and another i mean music connecting you know that's a whole aspect we can talk yeah. about yeah but absolutely. I, I, and, and 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 i think that, sitting as a concert master in orchestra of course and feeling the energy of a conductor following or listening to the colleagues in the orchestra um is one element of all these 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 aspects i think yes um when i started conducting there was not um a specific let's say you know i mean some of my colleagues our colleagues they say you know uh, uh, yes i knew with two years old that i will become a conductor <laughs> and all that i'm sorry i i have to disappoint i this i cannot this story is not i i am not that um it was actually i'm i was interested in many things uh, yeah. i had a great school uh it was a german french gymnasium i don't know uh, in, in english uh, focus on on the french school system which men, which means that um, actually you, you 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 make your matura you you uh, in every topic. So yes. it was yeah. geography to religion to sport to music. Everything was <laughs> important, and I loved it because it was good teachers. There were good teachers and good school classmates. Um, good spirit. Beside yeah. that, next to that school, there was the Hochschule there for music. So I could just go from one school to the other, and. I was also interested in, in languages, in science, in um, acting. I did also some school acting at that time. You see, um, uh, maybe it was the search for what yes. I'm interested in. Who am I? The medical background of my father was also there. In, being interested in many things, trying to find connections in between. So it was a search in a way. And when I was 15, 14, 15, 16, um, I, I, I tried out conducting. There was mm. a kind of, a, uh, yeah, how would you say, a project where uh, when I became a young student in, at the, for piano, and there was also one, where you can, one topic where you could try out conducting. That was, yes, I'd like to try that out. And then when I tried it, I knew that that was the goal. That was yeah. the you know, in all what I was looking for in music, you know, being also alone on the piano, um, because if you are alone, you, you can do chamber music, but more or less you, you are alone with this big black instrument. Violin, yes, but I missed somehow more sounds. I, I you know, and the experience of being in the orchestra. Anyway, I, I, I thought I need to try out the conducting. The next name I see, it says on Wikipedia, and, and, and as, <laughs> this comes up a lot on the podcast, how we can trust Wikipedia. It says that in 2007, you finished your conducting studies with Nicolas Pasquet at the Hochschule for Music, Franz Liszt in Weimar. So how long were you with Nicolas? Was he your only teacher? And another, th another thread of the podcast is, with a teacher's name, whose name I don't know, I was asked, what sort of teacher was he? Was he a stick technique teacher, a score study teacher, or the whole holistic overall package? What yeah. sort of style was he? 
Yeah. So um, after I finished my school with 1920, um, I, I had one year to, to focus on preparation for really studying music, uh, conducting. And, um, and then I, I applied in Weimar because uh, it was known already to, to have a strong department for conducting. Mm. Um, different three, three main uh, conducting teachers. One, of course, Nicolas Pasquet. The other was for choral conducting and the other was for opera. So Nicolas Pasquet oh. was more of the symphonic repertoire. Yeah. He shared, he shares, still shares um, with his colleague, uh, the conducting department, more focusing on symphonic repertoire. And the, the other uh, professor, Gunther Kallert at that time, he's retired now, was more focusing on the opera repertoire. Now, beside that, of course, all the correpetition and cembalo, yeah, all what we know. Um, hmm. So Nicolas Pasquet, he, um, I was very lucky because from the beginning we had the possibility to be in front of an orchestra. Mm. And as you know, we, we have not our instrument at home. We cannot just open the case and take out our, our orchestra <laughs> and just start to play. We I cannot. wish we could. <laughs> we, we, we're sitting at the table here, the scores, and, and uh, everything is in the head. Um, but so it's, um, it was, uh, that, that's why I chose also Weimar because they offered from the beginning. And I, 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 I felt very comfortable and very good with Nicolas Pasquet because he's, he's a very emotional mm. um, conductor, um, technically, wonderfully, um, very taking care of, no, this will not work in front of the orchestra because you downbeat and the end of the impulse goes in the other way and where's your presence how can you conduct you know what kind of melody do we have now here in Brahms one or whatever yeah. and uh, uh, how do you present it how do you feel it and why do you feel it linked to the text and then how, how you transmit it to the orchestra yeah. um, no, you have to take care of your left arm what is your left you know everything kind of mm. um, but more focusing on the symphonic uh, repertoire and then with Gunther Kahler it was the opera that we really from from all that stop here three left go and, and you know all these, yeah. these <laughs> organizing things that are so essential in uh, in a world where where yeah, there are much more parameters and, and and criteria that you have to take care of mm. so um, um I was kind of blessed to have all these these fantastic teachers and to be to be honest um my brother is a viola player in the Berliner Philharmonica. Uh, he's four years older. And already at that time, when I was just starting uh, learning to conduct, um, I explained that I have to go to Berlin because there's a rehearsals of Claudio Abado or mm -hmm. blah, 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 Hanon Kur. I'd like to. And they all agreed. If they said, no, you have to go because it's important. So it was never. You know, sometimes you have these uh, Hochschule or conservatoires where the, the teachers are very closed, studying, mm. you know, uh, important that, and of course, I did all that. But it's much more important that you go out, that you get your experience, that you connect to people, that you learn from the maestros, from the real. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. It's sometimes a very closed, it can be closed. Um, uh, so yeah, atmosphere in the Hochschule. So yeah, I, I was very happy and fortunate to, to to have people around me, professors and now friends who already understood it's so important to get out. To go well, out. it, it sounds like a very uh, yeah. enlightened approach. Um, it's the correct one because going and watching other people rehearse, especially the maestros you mentioned, we're going to come on to assisting soon. Yeah. Um, a, a question has just popped into my head. Because of where you are, where you were living, and your pianism skills, at any stage did the thought process of going into the the well-known German Kapellmeister system ever mm -hmm. come up as a as an option for you, or was two thousand and eight and what happened in two thousand and eight the reason why you didn't go into Kapellmeistering? Yes, um, <laughs> I, I, it's hard to say. I, I maybe to be at the right time at the right. Uh, spot. Um, yeah. um, yes, I, I, to be honest, if I, if I think back, the things just happened. Yeah. Um, and um, 
it started already before 2008 when when 2008 was the competition of the Donatella Flick conducting mm. competition um, but already before that I I met Bernard Heiting yeah. um, and and uh, that was just out kind of out of the blue I there was a on the on the on the wall where they have some documents and uh, applications in the Hochschule hanging there was a little paper um, application for a master class in Luzern, Luzern uh, with Bernard Heiting. Mm. And I thought, well, why not? Why not? I, 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 I can apply and I see if, 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 if it will work or not. And uh, what do I have to lose? What do I have yeah, to lose? Nothing. I can just, you know, can be great experience. So I applied for it and I got the invitation. There was the conducting in front of the maestro. And, um, and he selected to me, he selected me as one of the active past- participants so I, mm. I was in front of the orchestra and from that moment and after that uh, master class master class I asked maestro is it possible to, to stay in touch with with you at some point is there yes and he invited me to Amsterdam and and that's how it started actually mm. and that was the first um the first biggest step into the symphonic world the yeah. biggest step um away from the German Kapellmeister system, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Thinking back at that time. At that moment, in that time, I, I just took it as a wonderful, you know, life, maybe life-changing at that time. Maybe I cannot say it, could not say it at that moment, but thinking back, of course, it, it, it was life-changing. Yeah. And, and you assisted I, him in Chicago and oh, in yeah, London yeah, yeah. and Concert What was he like to assist? And, and was he uh, ready to give you advice or... or you know, was he one of these conductors who'd say, I remember somebody saying to me that, uh, you know, give me five bad things that went wrong in that rehearsal, as far as you're concerned. It was Juan Homena. He would always say to those who were assisting him, give me five things you didn't like. You know, what, was Bernard Heiting like that? Or was he no. much more of a, you know, waiting for you to pick his brains? He did not talk so much. He was never a, a great talker. Also in front of, I, may, I, I am sure you know him. Yes. Uh, he, 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 he tried to show everything. Yeah, everything in his hands with this very organized and and transparent gesture, very clear. Nothing crazy big, so the sound was clear uh, and transparent. And um, and yeah, I, I I we went through scores, of course, in the mm. in the time of preparation, the, the, the pieces, uh, Chicago, Amsterdam, London. You mentioned yes, all these Berlin. And of course, we, we, we discussed things, how to do that, where to take care, what, what to take care at this part and this transition. And, and some questions I had, and he said, David, I also, I don't know. And <laughs> so, so these things came, then, <clears throat> came up then during the rehearsal process. And to be honest, um, the, the, the most I, I learned from him the most was, was care for sound. Yeah. Um, quality of sound, transparency. And I asked Bernard, uh, how do you get your sound in five minutes, three minutes, you have the sound? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, he said. And that's one of these mysteries of conductors uh, talking about sound, um, having the sound in your head and then transmitting it into, into, into the gestures and then trying to get it through the musicians to the audience it's it's a there's always a question mark there's always a kind of mystery in it and already mm. how we walk on stage already it influences the musicians how we it's a, it's an energy it's a it's a charisma it's um yeah it's there's some mystic inside but anyway with, with bernard it was it was never really um tell me this uh, what shall i do it was yeah. always um, uh, uh, here. The horns are careful. They're always quiet here. And, and then I, I, I went immediately to the players. I had the permission, um, checking some balance things. I was there, I, jumping in. Um, yeah. in yeah. But, but it was not um, kind of, um, you know, a paper with all the points to, to, yeah. to, to work on. Uh, it was mere, more feeling very sensitive, um, very noble. Uh, that sounds very much like Bernard Heiting to me. The, yes. the videos I've watched of him, and there's a, a, a one-hour film mm-hmm. about his his pen, you know, his, his retiring. Uh, I've watched, and and I'm not surprised that he he said to you honestly, I don't know. You know, it just seems to be his way. His and and it's know. also it it feels also good, so good to hear from 
from these maestros. I mean, he's he's one of the last really of, of, of really the great 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 ones. Uh, mm. And to have doubts, uh, questions, and just to hear or to feel a hand on your shoulder from someone like him to say, I know, I, I, I went through the same situation. You know, it's mm. just, ah, it's, thank you. You're also human. We are all human. <laughs> we, you know, <laughs> we can make mistakes. It's just, um, yeah. it's important not to forget um, that th- this profession is really, uh, you, you are not perfect at the, from the very beginning on, man, we, we have to make mistakes and we, are, we should make mistakes because um, it's, it's really difficult. Yeah. And it, yeah. there's so much things a part of this, I'm sure we will talk about that. Uh, a part of this, you know, where's the one and where's the three and all these technical things, which are not so important. The, the, the psychology to deal with the, 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 the feelings of the music, to understand from the other perspective, the empathy to, mm. to, to what's going on with these people who are sitting there and maybe having a bad day and you try to get some, but you don't get, you know, oh, it's, it's <laughs> this psychological aspect is so, so important. And, and, to have a, someone like Bernard who is so sensitive in that direction and so humble and at the same time so strong in the in the in in his will i mean uh, it was just uh, yeah i can today i can say it's absolutely it was life changing you know? We're going to go on to another maestro now. You're a first for the podcast. You're the first double competition winner I've ever interviewed. Oh, yeah. uh, in, in 2010, you were the first winner of the Nestle and Salzburg Festival Young Conductors Award. But let's go back. We mentioned 2008 when you won the Donatella Flick Conducting Competition. And the prize there is two years as assistant conductor to the London Symphony Orchestra and also at the time to Valery Gergiev, who is a, yeah. who was the music director at the time. You would have spent a lot of time with Valery Gergiev, but also with all of the other guest conductors who were coming in. What was it like to assist Gergiev? Did you end up doing any Michael Francis type very late jump ins? Um, I've interviewed Michael Francis, and he he jumped in on a couple of occasions. What was the difference like between Bernard Heitink and Valery Gergiev? Well, I already at that time I was more connected to 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 Bernard, to be honest. Yeah. But um, the the first prize of the Donatello Flick was really to be not specifically assistant of Valery Gergiev, but to be assistant to the of the London Sam, to yeah. the So um, I could choose the projects. Um, I, I was still studying at that time in Weimar, so I, of course I wanted to make progress there as well. But um, yes, of course I, I assisted Valery and it, it, it was unbelievable, um, to be honest. I have great memories of a Bluebeard, Bartok Bluebeard, Mm. Um, which he conducted, he rehearsed marvelously in detail, sound-wise, uh, the, the the context and and the the first concert was unbelievable. Mm. I never I never really was the LSO sounded so so. The message of the Bluebeard was so clear. It was mm. so great, and the second concert was a I could not understand what happened. It was the complete <laughs> contrast. So the extreme, mm. I would say. Of uh, of Gergiev, I, I I learned uh, mm. to 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 observe, to see, and to to analyze a little bit, um, to take certain freedoms, um, to to be, um, let's say, a little bit less clear, so that they take the responsibility. Um, uh, is something I, I I learned from him, but also to to go more far in the ideas. Mm. I mean, mm. Um, and as Shostakovich, yeah, we know what's about in Shostakovich 10 second movement. And, but no, 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 it's great what you do, but it's not enough. Go more mm. extreme. No, it's not enough. Go. And, you know, you reach certain things that, man, it's, uh, is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Mm. And, and, and um, yeah, I, of course, I, I, I had also this moment where, where I had to take over. And, um, but it was more, more an assisting again an assistance to to the orchestra so yeah taking uh, being being the cover in some tools having educational pro- projects i know michael because michael he was one of the 
uh, two other colleagues who were in the finale of the Donatello Thick Donat 2008. So I, I, I knew him from that time. Mm. Um, and then, of course, as a double bass player, and then he, he's changed to, to, con to be a conductor. And I know that he was then more connected to Valeri in, in the future times. And, mm. and that, was, that was great for him. So, no, I, I, I'm deeply grateful for all the time with the LSO because you also with John Elliott Gardiner with Daniel Harding Colin Davis uh, mm. at that time Pre Previn was the, I mean many many uh, aspects many influences you get I think uh, all the great conductors from Kleiber Karajan they also had go to the rehearsals and listen to the mm. colleagues and I think I I was so lucky to have the, the possibility to do that with the LSO, but the other orchestras as well. The other thing that you get, um, because I've seen it happen in Birmingham when they've had assistant conductors after me, I was different because I was playing in the orchestra and assistant conductor, which is completely you know different. But the ones that have followed me have done two years, like you did at the LSO. And the other thing you get is that knowledge you know, of forming a relationship with the players of the orchestra, standing in a tea queue or a coffee queue, sitting on a bus with them on go from an airport to a hotel, finding out things, you know, maybe getting some tips from players who are, yeah. you, know, you become friendly with. You know, isn't yeah. that such an important thing at that stage of your career? You might not be young in, uh, in years, but you are in a conducting career, and to get that advice it's, is it's very important. Very important. I remember from the LSO, uh, some good friends, good players, fantastic players. We just, you know, David, uh, I, be more free with your left hand or, 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 or let us play. We know, uh, you mm. know, I mean, they, how can, I mean, we are nothing. We're nothing starting conducting. They, they have played this thousand times. Uh, I mean, how dare we to tell them, you know? <laughs> Yes. Thing, yeah. But of course we have to because some things are not working. But but um, yes, definitely these advices are maybe the most important ones. Yeah, it's like Martin yeah. Brabin says when you first stand in front of an orchestra at the beginning of your career. In the terms of the years of study, we're children compared yeah. to the musicians we're conducting. Some of them were studied for fifteen years before being in a career for thirty-five years. You know, and you're stood you're stood there, and you're expected, as you just said, at times to point out what's wrong and how to fix it. But yeah. you know, we you have to have that memory in the back of your mind at the beginning, I think, and not yeah. you know not arrogantly think, well, I know everything because you just you just don't. Oh. Uh, it, and and the, as the long longer your career goes on, maybe you hopefully you agree with me. I discover more and more things I don't know, and you you just think you know uh, it, 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 it's it, it gets more and more difficult. Um, the the repertoire, even you repeat certain repertoire more and more. You discover more and more, and it, it becomes at certain point. Yes, you're you're familiar. You know it somehow. But at the same time, you think, how how have I done that before? Why? <laughs> uh, and then you get. I mean, if you're that sensitive, you get more humble in a way, and you have more respect, and you you realize, man, it's it. There are no hundred percent real answers. The questions no. get bigger. But that's also the beauty of our profession. It's it's an art that just, uh, yeah, is being created in the moment from 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 nothing. I mean, mm. all that black dots on the paper is just just as kind of half information of, and the rest will happen in the moment. Mm. Uh, but but it's it's yes, I absolutely agree with you. Um, the questions get bigger; they get more. <laughs> um, at the same time, I have to be honest to you, um, Barenboim once said, you know, don't be too, too humble or too scared. Let's not, scared is the wrong word, but mm. maybe too humble. You have to conduct at certain point Beethoven 9. You have to, it's like a plant, like a little flower. You have to put it into the earth and f put water on it, water on it. It's, at certain point, it will grow. And this we have to do. We have to start at certain point with, with, the little experience that we have from something, maybe from being in the orchestra or, and then um, jumping into the water. And that's yeah. also an advice that I, I, I'm very happy with um, and very grateful for uh, Bernard has said once and after a couple of years being at his side, you know, uh, David, now it's time for you to, 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 to move, to yeah. make the next step. And 
And that's also, uh, yeah, important to to try to stand on your both on your own feet and um, yes, make your own mistakes. <laughs> I and I, I, it's important. Well, the next step, 2014, you become principal conductor of the Orchestra y Coro Nacional de España. And yeah. then in 2019, five years later, they changed that from principal conductor to chief conductor and artistic director. It's a question that I've never asked a conductor uh, on the podcast, and this is you know, well into the 80s, episode-wise. Does it? Is that just a change of title, or does that give you extra roles? Yeah. I mean, it changes from country to country. You know, the yeah. music director of an orchestra in the UK may well have a bigger say in in appointments and deciding on who joins the orchestra or whatever. Um, how how has it changed the role? Yeah, you're completely right. It, it depends on on the country. It depends on the institution. Um, mm. it, it, First of all, they're just words on a paper, so it's it's mm. nothing, really. Um, but in in the Orchestra y Coro Nacional de España, it means that um, being principal conductor is you're just responsible for your own weeks. Yes. Um, I it was my decision to take part in every audition. Mm. In every, I was sitting in every audition um, to to be part of the process of selecting uh, new members of the orchestra and of the choir. Um, but I was at that time, 2014, 13, 14, and then up to 18, 19, I was not involved, for instance, or I was involved, but it was not my responsibility. Um, the overall um, season planning, mm. guest conductors, uh, guest artists. Um, so that was in the hands of a um, music director, artistic director at that time. Um, who changed, and then uh, I was asked to to take on also the artistic director and to become then chief conductor, which means, oh yeah, officially now really being in every audition and <laughs> and the the entire planning of the season and the artistic strategy for the future, uh, all the um, internal aspects. I would say um, the, the, the the rules of the orchestra. They're always um, it's it's a it's a national orchestra, national choir. So we are very connected to the rules of the state. Um, so union wise, um, uh, yeah, there there are a lot of aspects that that are important and which are just not musical mm. that are also connected to my my job then. Um, yeah, being artistic director is this overall, and then of course being chief conductor is then my weeks. Um, yeah. So it's it's it, it is much more responsibility, absolutely. Yeah. And that it is. brings up an interesting link between the the next thing I've written on my notepad, dear listener, is guesting. Um, but actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna link it into what you've just said. If you're in charge of the the whole season for the National Orchestra of Spain now as artistic advisor, artistic director. How do you go about choosing your guest conductors? I mean, the way I imagine it works is very similar to how it works here in Birmingham, is that the orchestra tell the management, we like this person, we, and, and they become a regular every year, or they might become a regular every two years. And there is a whole load of those sort of people. And then every year you try and introduce some young talent or a latest hotshot that's appeared from a, a competition. Um, uh, and... And it's a mixture of that. Is that how you do it? Or, I mean, do you have people out there scouting for new talent or is it all done word of mouth? You might meet somebody and say, oh, have you heard about such and such? He or she's really good. How does it work? Well, well it's, a, it's a mix of all. So, um, first of all, um, we, we, we as National Orchestra, we have a responsibility towards, the, of course, the Spanish culture, the Spanish repertoire, the Spanish mm -hmm. talents as well. Um, so... Uh, it's important to have Spanish. Let's just focus now on conductors. It's yeah. important that we have Spanish uh, conductors. Um, we have created a new um, cycle where we uh, present uh, talent as young Spanish talent who might not get um, uh, a chance in their stage to, to present themselves with an orchestra like that. So we have a kind of a cycle where we discover new talent, which mm. then it's pos positive can lead to another project with the orchestra in Coro Nacional. Um, so, uh, of course, uh, that's that's one aspect. Um, then we need to see what has the orchestra, let's be just focusing on the orchestra, what has the orchestra played in the recent years? 
Um, when I took over, they were very a romantic orchestra, so heavy sound, very uh, dark sound, beautiful. Mahler, Strauss, no problem. I mean, always problem, but uh, Beethoven, much much harder for them to play clean. And you know, so so what is necessary? What is necessary? Where do we have to? focus more on where do we get more flexible what repertoire has never really played so a kind of um research what the orchestra needs mm. uh, where, where to push the repertoire and then slowly trying to move the orchestra into that direction so last year with the beethoven cycles of the beethoven anniversary yes was a yeah. wonderful a possibility i focusing now on schumann before he was hired in mozart i started with the Brahms cycle Mahler always going through because they, they are wonderful Mahler orchestra, Strauss orchestra. I started with uh, doing opera with them because it's a purely symphonic orchestra. So every season there's an opera kind of semi-staged in the big... I, uh, I think that's so important. Yeah. So from Flying Dutchman with Brinter Fell and Peter Rose in the main main roles uh, to, to, to now next season Salome over Bluebeard, uh, Elektra, um, you know, it's... It's so important that the orchestra and the choir enlarges the, the repertoire. Mm. And of course, then we are in touch with, with agency. You know, the world is all connected. We have agents and we hear from a competition and he's a Spanish one, a winner. Why not? Let's observe him a little bit. Um, did, he, did you, uh, of the artistic team, hear something from your friend who's the agent of that? You know, mm. uh, we try to... And on the other hand, um, which are the maestros that the orchestra has wonderful connections with? Of course, we have F after every week, we have a kind of inquesta, which is a, a feedback of the orchestra, mm. you know, where it's going wonderful, the contact, and where we really would like to continue the relationship. Young conductors giving them another chance, all the ones where we, we just feel the experience, you know. And women conductors as well, mm. that's a mm. big, big subject, which is in the moment. Um, hard to to um because there are not so many um mm -hmm. and those who who really you know they they can ride the horse are uh, really are wonderful with an orchestra they're just you cannot get them anymore because they're all over the place yes so they're it's, busy, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's really um then um uh, who's who's a specialist you know we had ton Kopman and and william christie and you know, and then on the other hand, for, for that repertoire, Emmanuel Ayin, you know, we have mm. different up topics. Then, then uh, going to the contemporary music, I'm always interested in finding Jörg Wittmann or Addis, you know. Yes, yeah. Conductors, conductors, uh, Matthias Pincher, uh, and all the Spanish ones who, who are not just composing, but also coming from an instrument who can interact with the orchestra just also in another uh, uh, role, uh, I find that very interesting, and um, well, there's many many aspects to 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 put together um, a season, and all, all over that, and um, I'm always thinking in two, three, four years, artistic ideas where I see what is important nowadays with society, what is influencing us. I just don't want to say, oh yeah, let's do a Beethoven cycle. No, why? Yeah. Why do yeah. we know the new Beethoven cycle? What what does Beethoven say? Is it just because uh, yeah we have to play it because of the repertoire? No. What is the link? So let's invite musicologists. Let's try to make a research. Let's try to to open the the, the concert hall uh, to make some installations, whatever. Just just to 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 justify also the public money <laughs> that goes into these institutions. Yeah. It's not. It should not become a bad museum. That no. I think is really, we have a responsibility to 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 our society, and 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 that means that we have to reflect on why we are playing much more than it used to be. Why we are playing and what we are playing. Mm. So and this takes time. Um, you need a team, um, but it's beautiful if you if you can create that as well. And from, maybe from the from the one hundred percent that you have in your head, if it's thirty percent or thirty five or maybe forty kind of realize that at the end, I think you can be already happy. And we are not talking about tours. We are not talking about academy, about uh, exchange with other orchestras. You know, that's another yeah. aspect. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like a football club. You're just talking there about the first team. Uh, yeah. You're not talking about the under 21s. You're not talking about the youth yeah. setup. You're not talking about grassroots. Um, yeah. yeah, just the first team. Uh, well, that's wonderful, fascinating, um, and it means that you you know you're going to spend more time uh, in meetings doing that than you know if you're just the principal conductor or just guest conducting, going somewhere which is partly the easiest gig of all because you just turn up and conduct. But of course, it's 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 got the other aspect of the fact that if you're guest conducting somewhere for the first time, there's that first date feeling, you know, not it's, knowing it's, what's going to happen. It's true that, of course, um, uh, my responsibility as, as a chief conductor and artist, artistic director in Spain is, is, is very big and I, I, I love the responsibility. It's, mm. it's, it's, I'm, even though, to be honest, my, my style of leading, um, that's something that I also learned from Hightink is more leading from inside rather than from outside. So a lot of listening to, to what's happening inside, what, what, what their wishes is. Of course, you have to make decisions. Of course, you have to have your own ideas and to, to get them realized. Um, and at the end, you decide. Mm. But um, it's, uh, if you try to share responsibilities to include as many people as possible and not to convince but to make them part of your idea then the motivation is a completely is a completely different thing um mm. you don't need to motivate they 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 are the motivation at, at a certain point so it's it, that's very interesting but of course the many meetings um the time in spain is 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 wonderful um but i'm also happy of course when i i can guest conduct somewhere mm. Uh, of course, you're there for three, four, five, six, seven days, uh, depending on the project. And then again, you're away. But in a w certain, uh, I cannot um, disconnect from my habits now. Uh, if I'm there, <laughs> yeah. if I'm if I'm there, I I try to do the best for the for the project in that moment. Whichever ensemble I have in front of me, whoever mm. people, are, I the the will is same as strong and the wish to do the best for the piece as in, in Madrid or wherever. So mm. it's, um, um, the energy is always the same. Yeah. So and right. the experience, thanks God, the experience that I, and I don't know how and who I can thank uh, for that in the world, but the experience in Madrid since these years. And I, I just um, signed a couple of months ago now, three, four months ago, um, a, a renovation of, uh, of my existing contract uh, until, yeah, two more years. It will be 23, 23, 24, hmm. which will be totaled in 10 years. I don't know how to thank for, for that experience that I, I learned that, to I get that, because it's to be in such an institution, um, not just choir, not just an orchestra, but ahead of all that stuff with all the personal aspects and it's just uh it's priceless really. mm. and we're not talking about the music no <laughs> <laughs> One final question before we go on to the 10 questions, and it's one that I've asked pretty much every conductor who's been on the podcast. We all have to learn scores. Yeah. How do you go about it? Do you, as a pianist, sit at the piano to learn your scores or just sit at your desk and use your inner ear or a combination of the two? And most importantly, for the conducting students and geeks who listen to this podcast, do you write a lot in your scores? And when you do, do you use different colours, red, blue and black? Or do you mm. not write anything? Do you just uh, learn it all and absorb it into your brain, like mm. many many conductors do who've come on this podcast? How do you yeah. go about the whole thing? Well, uh, it's an element. It's a combination of all all these uh, things. So uh, it's a lot of sitting, um, looking, watching, listening inside, um, but also playing. Uh, I, I I I play a lot. Not crazy a lot, but but yes, for for um, harmonies and um, modulations, and <clears throat> it gets harder, of course, uh, 
the more you move in the 20th century. Um, but it just, um, it's important, I think, for analyzing reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, if you're sitting at uh, Haydn Symphony, you, you don't need to now play everything. It, it's just, but if you're sitting on an Electra or a Salome, it's mm. not bad to, you know, play it somehow. If I write a lot, I, I started with very little writing, um, to be honest. Um, I got influenced by certain musicologists who from an analyzing point of view, um, it helped for the structure to just um, take some markings um, for, for, for the architecture. For yeah. The, yeah. Um, for organization as well, um, for the instrumentation, it depends if it gets more and more complex. Definitely, uh, Salome is just, just uh, f finished again. Yes, I use colors, I, I mark things. Um, but also depending on the score as well. So, yeah. yeah. Every, I think everybody has to find its own, his own or her own system of, of, of reading, of um, understanding a score. Um, yeah, if, if, if I remember the score of, of Abado, for instance, a lot of markings, um, hiding very little, but also in colors, it, it, um, yeah, it depends. Baron yeah. nothing. Yeah. Uh, Papano, also nothing. Jonathan, not a lot of, uh, uh, because I was also in, in the Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra assistant. And so I, yes. I, I, it was wonderful to have also there many, many uh, uh, maestros to, to where I could, you know, watch over the shoulder. And, and mm. everybody has his own or her own system. Are you fascinated by conductors and conducting? Would you like to learn a lot more about what we do and how we do it? Well, you can find out all sorts of secrets, tips, opinions and much, much more on my Patreon page. You can hear interviews with musicians, composers, soloists and managers and hear their thoughts on conductors and conducting. You can read my diaries when I go on guest conducting trips, such as my recent trips away to Norway and Germany. You can take part in group meetings with other like-minded conducting fans. You can read articles on conducting and conductors, and you can even have conducting lessons from myself. All of this is available at patreon.com forward slash a mic on the podium. And from just £5 a month, which is less than a good glass of wine, you can gain access to this ever-growing resource on conductors and conducting. Details and links to the page are in the show notes attached to this episode. Now, the all-important 10 questions with my guest, David Afkam. David, it's that point all the conductors love, or possibly dread, who knows? It's the 10 questions. And as ever, I start with what sound or noise do you love and what sound or noise do you hate? Uh, silence, I love. Um... <laughs> Is that because of the new newborn baby? Or no, just... <laughs> no, it's not. But uh, as you know, we are surrounded so much by music. Yeah. Um, that silence is, uh, has become something very precious. Uh, mm. even in our, our times, you go out, the elevator, supermarket. No, it's, uh, we also um, moved in the, right at the beginning of the pandemic mm. uh, last year in May, uh, we decided oh, let's, let's leave Berlin. We lived until there uh, in Berlin. Um, it's not quite good to be in a big city uh, with closed <laughs> in a in a pandemic. It's not mm. good. So we 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 moved to the countryside uh, where the family is and where and suddenly again realizing silence and the birds singing and uh, it's it's just um, it's just wonderful and and existential. I realized again. I I, I always loved nature, so this is a very important element, but. If you ask me what what kind of sound and or music, it's it's silence, uh, nature that that I adore and that I need and that I love, noise that I don't like, um, yeah, stupid noises. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm open to everything really, uh, and uh, I come from a family with very coloured 
uh, backgrounds, very international. So all sorts of music from the Indian Bollywood to really Bach and uh, whatever. Um, but if, if it's something that is um, kind of, yeah, stupid music or, or just a, uh, kind of just um, pushing one button in your heart or in your mind, no, I'd like to 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 something which is um, speaking to me, not just speaking emotionally, but also intellectually. Mm. That's for me important. Yeah. If you had twenty four hours free, what would you spend it doing? Mm. Well, um, as you just said, uh, we have our second child at that moment. Um, it's another perspective in family. So, family is very important to me. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, spending the time with my family. Because I think one of your questions will also be about being a, what means being a conductor uh, and what would you like to change, mm. I, I read in you. And that I could answer right away. It's the loneliness. Mm. It's, it's, we, are, we are alone. We have, again, we, we, we don't have um, our instrument with us. Of course, we have our score, which is sounding in our head, hopefully. Um, but the travel... Um, even you're doing music together in front of the people, in front of you, wonderful musicians. Still, even primus inter pares, you're you're one of the others. You are still not with the others. No, that's so, correct. Yeah. And 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 um, that sometimes you it's hard to deal with. So um, yeah, so twenty four hours with my family. Yes. Who would be a favorite conductor or conductors? You can have more than one of yesteryear. Oh. Well, I think, um, I suppose Carlos Kleiber is an answer that everybody <laughs> would say. <laughs> he appears very often, yes. <laughs> he appears very often. No, um, um, yeah, just because of uh, uh, there's so many myths and uh, legends around him. Yes, yeah. A part, a part of being a fantastic conductor. Uh, I would like to, to, to meet him, but also people like, yes, um, uh, Furtwängler, because I'm German, I mean, has a strong impact, of course. Mm. But but uh, there's there, there are many names, of course. Uh, Karian is also wonderful. I mean, yeah, it, the, 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 the list is long. The list is long. Yeah. Um, even if it's just, you know, sitting in a rehearsal just to listen to the sound, even you don't hear what they say, you don't need to hear them saying, but what their sound was... Mm. Mm, could be very, very interesting. I was very fortunate to have many projects of many, yeah, to be in many rehearsals with Hanon Kuo, and that was also a strong impact, mm, mm. to be honest. Um, yeah, no, there are many, many names I'm very grateful uh, that I, I could learn from, so. Well, Harlan Core and Kleiber keep appearing, and and I did. Somebody once did tweet me and say, "Is every conductor going to say Carlos Kleiber uh, near the beginning of the podcast?" My answer to that tweet now would be, "Well." If they do, it shows how much uh, um, conductors respect Carlos Kleiber, and therefore mm. he must have been that good. Um, mm. You know, uh, so just accept it. And and Harnoncore is actually becoming quite quickly a clear second in this list. Uh, he would; those two were my personal choices in episode fifty when I had somebody interview me, um, and I think they are two clear winning names. Yeah. The next question is harder. Can you name some favorite current conductors? Mm. <laughs> yeah that's 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 hard and i also would like to make a step away from that um no but uh from that question but it's um well i i i, I again i i told you i lived in berlin until last year and i mm. i try to to and my brother as a player of the berliner philharmonica i used to to listen to many rehearsals yeah and, and concerts in the Berlin Philharmonie. And there were many which really uh, inspired me. And um, I think, and I don't want to get away now from that question, but- <laughs> but, but, you're, but you're going to. <laughs> uh, but it's true that yeah, yeah. in every rehearsal, whoever there is standing in front of the orchestra, you learn something um, mm. and you, you, you get in a way inspired by negatively or positively. Mm. Um, so it's it's um, I I know I cannot tell you I don't want to tell you in in detail because it's 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 really hard to say. I think that's 
almost the same answer that uh, I've had <laughs> where people have said, well, there, actually, there are so many good conductors out there now at the moment that it would be unfair to pick on or name just a few. It, it um, depends. It, it's, it's true. If I'm, you, you just tell me that and I'm thinking, you know, uh, for instance, I'm sitting at a Schumann symphony and I'm thinking who... Who impressed me, or who, where I, not impressed me in the sense that, you know, impressed, but mm. where I got impressed by the music making and, and in, in, in relation to the, to, the, to the text that we have. I, I, I had Daniel, immediately Daniel Harding. Uh, mm. I, I just had Francois Xavier Roth in my head, yes. you know, and then I compared to, 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 to others. Um, and I, in repertoire, I would say no, but I would add to that, you know, other names. It's true what you say. There are many. We, are, we have much more contact to other, uh, um, to all the conductors or all the musicians at the, my, that time because of the social media, because of the videos that exist. Uh, yes, it's true. So yeah. it's, it's um, we, we see much more. And um, and we hear much more, and uh, it's getting harder to to just say yeah this this one and this one. Mm. It depends on the repertoire, clearly. What is the hardest work you have ever conducted? It's it's difficult to answer because there there again there are some pieces which are quite uh, f from a physical point of view which are just tough. It's mm. it's true. Um, I, I when we did. Two years ago, Tristan, a complete Tristan. Um, even though it did not feel long in the moment, mm. just afterwards you realize, man, that was really a marathon. A marathon. It, it, it. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was very interesting to see. But that was really an, uh, a special, I would say, special uh, project, um, mm -hmm. conducting wise. Um, uh, yeah, other pieces which are when we did the Beethoven cycle, discovering again the Beethoven symphonies. Man, these are very difficult pieces. Yes. Beethoven nine is always difficult, always. Mm. Mm. It's um, yeah, it, it's it's it, it it depends really on on the repertoire. Now I'm I I, I just sat on 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 Electra and Salome. Yeah, just from from a analytical point of view, it's it's. It is not that easy. Uh, mm. this, uh, and then you need time to dig into that language. And um, even though I'm German, of course, but I mean the, the musical, you know, where the motives goes and where is the modulations. And it's, it, it, it takes much longer than now, not to be unfair, but to take a Haydn symphony, even that also is tricky. Mm -hmm. um, everything in itself if you do it wisely or if you want to be ah, true what is true but true to, to the message and true to the, to the text that we have in front you need time and if you start to really confront yourself with that language it starts to be difficult mm -hmm. and not just because of the black dots on the white paper but because of the meaning what, at what time it was written is there a story is there no story it just starts to be bigger and we come back to the question at the beginning, the questions get bigger, get, you know, and, yes. um, but that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Yeah. You know? So um, from another, it just kind of comes to my mind, Bomarzo of uh, Ginastera. Uh, it's a very rarely played opera. Mm. I did uh, three, four, four, five years ago in, in Teatro Real in Madrid. Um very difficult from a technical point of view, very very difficult, but wonderful. If you, mm. again, if you confront yourself, if you start with that language, then you have it. And I think the, that makes it also interesting to, to, to yeah, to, to challenge yourself with these questions. Going back to Tristan, did you, have you conducted it? Was it in the pit or did you do a semi-stage concert performance? Yeah. We did so, a semi. Yeah, we did a semi. So you're stood up. That, I mean, that, there's the difference. Whereas when you're in the pit, that often in a in an orchestra pit, for the listeners who don't know, there's either a pull down little seat that you can perch on, or a stool you might have. Mm -hmm. um, when I did uh, Il Tritico twice in one day, I was very glad of my stool halfway through the second time through all three operas because it's tough. But when you're doing a, a, a semi staged or a concert performance of an opera, you, you've got to stand up. Um, no, I, I had a sofa. I was laying down. No, I, <laughs> I, I was. I was. <clears throat> no, I was standing all the time. Yeah, yeah. 
And again, if, if, if when you're in it, um, uh, it didn't feel that long, but uh, just after it's you, afterwards, just, yeah. or you, you, you think, well, that's, that was not just a small thing. But um, yeah, I think uh, if you're in the music, then it's, it, it is. It all, flies, also, yeah, flies you by, fly, doesn't it? You yeah. fly. Um, um, yeah, well, uh, I, I also, when I rehearse, I never use uh, a chair. Mm. I, I have the impression that um, the sound or your energy doesn't work as well if you're sitting. Mm. Mm. Somehow it's getting less focused or it's too comfortable. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but my, my, it's my experience. Um, so yeah, I, I flip between using a stool and not using a stool, and sometimes I feel that the best rehearsals are when I'm not st stood on the stool at all. No, no. When traveling abroad to conduct, what item could you not leave home without? Yeah, that's that's a that's also an interesting um question. Well, I always have a couple of books that are traveling with me. Mm. And then when I arrive, there's so much work and it's so intense that I, <laughs> I, I go back home without having maybe opened one page. No, <laughs> Been there, done that. It's, Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, uh, the books are traveling with me. Um, but uh, I have good friends who are also musicologists and you know who uh, say, David, hey, wonderful book that and that topic uh try to and then i of course have it and then i try to read but it's it's um it, it needs time to really um you know when we conduct it's not just something that we can do um out of the hip it's not something mm. that it's it we it's we are fully concentrated it physically if uh, if you travel to us uh, you have chat lag and so on you, you the head is focusing on the rehearsal after rehearsal you need time to at least me to to save your energy or to gain your energy back and and so it's it's not so much time where ah uh, yeah for for reading for instance what i try is is um, to, to 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 discover the, the city or to to, to the, the culture in a way to have going out into nature if there's nice nature um that's that's something or of course now with with two children um and if we are allowed back to travel as a family which corona time during corona times is not really advisable with all that rules um but of course with your family uh and mm. that also then a, a part of that there's not much time left so it's um but yeah i would say that the the books yeah definitely it's come up many times on here before you know i i laughed because i've often taken a book and i've got a crossword book that's been on more plane journeys than any other book i could ever imagine the only time i ever use it really is if you go somewhere you've never been before mm. and you end up in that position for the first for the you know the first two nights at least of eating dinner on your own to have a book uh, I mean, nowadays, of course, you can use your tablet and your phone and those answers are banned for this question. But having a book there is the, one of the only times I ever do get to use it because the rest of the time, as you said, you're recovering or you're dealing with something or you you just want to go and walk and empty your, your mind. Um, and you gave me the answer for number eight, which is the one yeah. thing you change about being a conductor. And, and that sort of tags in, which is the loneliness, the travel, um, and it, it all sorts of tags together which means we can jump to number nine Good. which is basically a fantasy question what profession other than your own would you like to attempt or would you have liked to have attempted uh well i i, I told you already i <clears throat> i love nature um sometimes i think uh the, all the culture and all the the creation of of the humans um to yeah of culture to write something uh, uh, to 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 a poem or a piece of music is kind of a maybe a compensation of 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 the missing of nature or being outside in nature. Maybe mm. it's, there's a longing to that. It's a very romantic uh, uh, idea that I just say. But sometimes I I, I feel that um, uh, we we lose a little bit the connection to nature, and um, I used to 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 have great walks with my family 
in the Black Forest uh, when I was young, nice bicycle tours. Um, it's, it's something that is deep inside me. We had a great big garden uh, just to being outside to, 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 to smell the air. And, um, and all in these discussions with climate change, I, well, I, I realize how much more important that is than, than ever. And uh, now being more in the countryside and having two little children um, more than ever, I, I realize it would, I, I suppose it would be something with nature. I, a job outside, a nature name, guide, or a, a forester, or a, yeah. who knows? I, I don't know. The other, the other job might be something with medicine because I also, oh, of course, yeah. I, my father and my family is, is uh, it, yeah, it influenced me in a way. Also, it's something. It's a little bit strange what I say, but in a way, as musicians, we give something to society. We give something to, to people. Um, Either we, we, we um, try to make them think about something or just to relax or just to enjoy or can be emotional, can be, you know, in, in, on an intellectual level. But in a way, there is an exchange. There is something, not a help, but somehow we try to make things better in society with art and culture and music. And, well, a medical doctor is kind of sometimes the same. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this this empathy for people, um, I I heritate in a way from from my father. So yeah, mm. it could be something also in the medical area. And finally, if the world were to end tonight, what would be your choice of final meal and drink? Well, uh, uh, definitely. First of all, it would be with my with my family, with my wonderful wife and my children um, and uh, to be honest um, it would be something that that uh, that my wife would have cooked because um, mm. even she said uh, I'm not a good cooker and I don't want to flatter her now but but she's really <laughs> a wonderful cook and um, it, I think it would be just a great pasta because I like a wonderful Italian pasta with a nice little wine um, it doesn't need to be something crazy, but um, mm -hmm. I think more more important is that that we are all together in the last yes. moment of. I think that's more important. Yeah. Uh, many people have said how important it is, uh, rather than what they're eating, but who they're eating it with, and, it, yeah. and it's something yeah. simple and something nice, and they'd be happy. And I, yeah. as I've been happy for the last hour or so chatting to you, David, it's been a real pleasure, and I hope in the future we get to meet. And um, and thank you. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure and let's meet. Definitely. Let's meet soon. All the best. A Mic on the Podium was devised and produced by Michael Seal with music by Ben Dawson. Next time, I chat to an American conductor who's conducted all across the world but is much better known for being a composer. He is one of the most performed composers writing today and his music has been at the forefront of contemporary music since the late 1970s. But until then, bye-bye.